Welcome to The Advocate, your Sunday reminder that important conversations are among the necessary tools for a sinner society. I will be talking about the state of the nation, the new Naira, chaos and uncertainty. Michael Oguchi will be talking about Nigeria policies, the implementation and impact. Olu Dolakpo Ojelabi will be talking about psychological effect of poorly designed building. Why? Elijah Oluwa Kayode Ipusun will be talking about elections 2023. So what? We will be back after this break. The state of the nation, new naira, chaos and uncertainty. February 6th was a devastating day indeed for Turkey and Syria as a 7.5 magnitude earthquake hit. A death toll of over 15,000 people have been recorded so far and still counting. These regions have been plagued with natural disasters and civil unrest. And so today, we will commiserate in solidarity with the residents of Syria and Turkey. May the soul of the victims of the Turkey-Syria earthquake rest in peace. Amen. Nigeria today is experiencing the monstrosity it nurtured. Rocket inflations, unstable markets, riots, corruption and the litany of irregularities characterizes the nation today. The soon coming election outcomes will determine the course of the nation and at this point, tactical distractions from authorities are barbaric and should be checkmated. On Monday, the Federal High Court puts restraint on the Central Bank of Nigeria from extending the Naira swap. Our governing authorities seem indifferent to the plight of the masses despite the obvious hardship and scarcity caused by these policies. This is a pointer to choose a leader with empathy over personal sentiment. We can only be great again if we push beyond this veil of corruption and self-centeredness. Collective values over self-gratification should be the hallmark of a nation that wishes to move forward and Nigerians have to imbibe that as a culture. Milton Friedman, an American economist, once said that the government's solution to a problem is usually as bad as the problem. Now, can this be applied to the ongoing chaos following the CBN's new Naira and cashless policy, which is intended to address our socioeconomic issues like Corbyn money laundry, insecurity, vote buying, etc. But for some reasons, causing hardship and chaos in the society. So my fellow advocates, let us examine the, the whole processes, you know, following the chaos and the new Naira redesign from... Now, what are the benefits of cashless policy? Mr. Kayode, you know, uh, okay, before you came earlier, I was discussing with... Uh, uh, we, are, we were talking about cashless policies and demerits, you know, the problems in security, vote buying and all this. So what are your thoughts? Let me start with you too, Mr. Kayode. Well, benefits are enormous. There is... Uh, you cannot overemphasize the benefit of a cashless policy. It, it is the way to go. It makes you... First of all, it makes you accountable. I'll give you an example. I, I paid for some things two days ago, and you know, I had to send the money. Then the following day, it was family, uh, for something for the family. So I went to the same area, same supermarket, and got another set of things, and I paid. Then I looked at the figures I spent. I'm like, I'm spending too much. You're not buying anything again in this house. <laughs> so I need to track your personal life. You track your personal life. That's a, pers that's a personal benefit to it. Um, it makes you, it's, it makes the, the environment or the community safer because there's no cash around for people to, to steal. And so your money is just being wired. And then it gives you guarantee that I can actually know somebody has paid. You know, for example, someone tells you, oh, I give you money, remember, count it. And you're like, ah, but I did. And you keep going back and forth and out of, okay, don't let me, maybe he's telling the truth, maybe he's telling the lie, just let it go. But this one is as simple as, okay, let me check my account balance. Or log into your account. Or log into my account and see. You don't see them, you have not paid. So if you are telling me you have issues, go to your bank. You have not paid. So all those things, there are so many benefits for it. And in addition to that, uh, that is on the uh, micro level. On the macro level, there's much more money in the banks to be traded with. So there are, there are enormous benefits. Okay, so Mr. Dolapo, your thoughts? Well, I know that spending from your phone mm. um, results in you spending more. 
<laughs> you don't pursue that. <laughs> is that your personal that experience? It's, it's even based on research. Mm. Okay. But if, if you have 20,000 in cash and you have 20,000 you are spending via a transfer, mm. it's easier for you to just make that transfer as against counting out the 20,000. Mm. So a lot of people's um, discipline is going to be tested. Mm. But apart mm. from that, you know, we, we have the perspective of the end users, civilians. But what about the banks? It makes life easier for them because the usual ratio of cash to how much money you can yeah. loan out, yeah. that yeah. is being disrupted. It's now all digital. Yeah. Yeah. So they can just create money like that. Now, that's obviously going to have its own repercussions down the line. Um, it's good to balance both sides, you know. Then look at, um, we say it's going to expand the tax bracket because you can't hide the money you are spending Definitely. anymore. Yeah. But what happens when the government is after someone and, you know, <laughs> they can easily cut off your access to all the money you have. Mm. I had a feeling that what we are experiencing now is how that would be like when you have money, but you can't have access to it. Mm. Oh. So those are the perspectives. I guess. Oh. It's just, just feeling like the big man, because when, when you're <laughs> from the government and they block your yeah. access to bank, or That's the court freezes yeah, your yeah, access, yeah. 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 it's over. So Mr. Gucci, yeah. Okay, I think um, if you look at it, um, cashless um, policy is something that it's not new. It's just about implementation has been, I think, Close to 10 years, if not more than. Yeah, I mean, so, I tried something like that. So, so the, the issue is, we have like 10 years to plan for cashless policy or drive home what it means to have a, an economy that is governed by cashless policy. I think within the last 10 years, I expected that CBN would have done better than, than what we currently experience. Because if you look at the percentage of the unbank against the bank, you still find out that within our context, the unbanked are still higher, maybe 58 to 60 percent. Mm -hmm. So I think um, over time, given the time we have, I think close to 10 years, if not 10 years, they've not done enough mm -hmm. to pass that message or plan enough for the implementation to go gradually and gradually. Because if every year the unbanked is not getting into getting banked, you find out that the implementation will definitely have its a toll on the masses. And I think that's what is we're experiencing now. Whether there are political undertones to why it is being implemented or enforced at this point, it's, yeah. it's, it's totally different conversation. Mm. But the point is, if we have five years, if we have 10 years to implement this, year by year, what has CBN done? And how come the enforcement is coming at a time where there is election and you know the force at which they want to achieve it, knowing that the percentage of people that are unbanked are quite higher than the people that are unbanked, you have to look at also illiteracy level. Mm. Okay, so let's talk about Supreme Court. Um, you know um, some governors, when Zanin Kugi, Kaduna, and which other state again? Zamfara. Uh, Zamfara. They, they actually sued um, the CBN, right? They said that they should block the... I think that they should, yeah, they should halt the, the uh, February 10 deadline. But then some other political parties, 14 political parties, also counter suit and say, no, we're insisting on the deadline. You guys want to buy, alleged, they're alleging that they want, they're interested in vote buying mm. because of cash and all this. So, uh, Mr. Koyo, I want to go back to you. What's your thoughts on this? Because Nigerians now, as of today, we don't know the stand, clear stand of the nation because I, I got a call from my dad just before the show, like, when is the deadline? Is the deadline going to hold? Yesterday, I was at the bank and they said, February 10th is the deadline, even though the court says otherwise. But well, we are yet to hear a clear instruction from the CBN. So what's your thoughts on this? Well, I mean, the angle from which you're coming is just a clear case of lawlessness mm -hmm. that is in our nation. And I say that with all due respect, but the truth is there is no nation in the world where the Supreme Court will give a verdict on an issue and you're telling me you're not sure what to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As in, I can't imagine it. Yeah. The Supreme Court has spoken and you're still saying you don't know. It's... So it just shows that, in a way, we say the government disobeys laws. We too don't really regard the laws. It's yeah. just a, you know, back and forth. And because by now we should be telling governments whether we like the the verdict or not. That listen, the Supreme Court has spoken. Yeah. We have to go ahead with it. But here we are saying no, don't obey the Supreme Court. And tomorrow when he doesn't obey the Supreme Court, we go back and say he yeah, disobeying the Supreme Court. So. Okay, so uh, <laughs> our, final, yeah, you're, you're gonna say our final talk on this. Yeah. 
chaotic situation. People are destroying properties of bank. POS agents are hiking price of, uh, there's hiking price of or cost of withdrawing or depositing funds, taking advantage of the scarcity of funds. And then the one that happened last week in the University of Benin, where soldiers and students had to fight because, because of the one again access to yeah. the ATM to withdraw cash. You know, this does not speak well of the country. So I want to hear your thoughts on this, Mr. Michael okay. and Mr. Okay, so um, the, the truth is um, when there is a system that gives an impression that lawlessness doesn't have consequence, you, there's tendencies you see this repeatedly over and over and again. There is nothing you can do about that. Now, um, until we get to a point where policies are being are considered to a, from a point of research, not just a, po a point of, oh, we want to implement something. Mm. Have you researched what is the total number of people that goes to the bank every day? What is the average number of withdrawals through um, ATM or POS daily? That will give them a proper perspective of the planning. Now, looking at you know the kind of chaos this is causing, I would have expected that we would have learned from issues of uh, NIM, BVN, the kind of, you know, uh, what's it called, rush, at so the nine you know, I would have expected that they would have made preparation in advance for things like this, but they never did. So when you say even um, POS, uh, what's it called, agent increasing what they charge against what they normally charge, you find out that, look, they don't just charge. I, I'm privy to certain information, so I can say this categorically. Some of them buy this money. I know mm -hmm. people that Which buy is as wrong. Well, 100,000 oh, for 10,000. Yeah. <laughs> you, so you don't expect. Where do they buy it from? Uh, business people. They buy for business people. Yeah. This person that will, or the normal day will bring cash to you to deposit mm. after sales in the evening. Now you, they, he's selling the money. He's now selling the money to you because he knows that you need the money. Yeah. So if somebody buys 10,000 for uh, 100,000 for 10,000, how do you expect him to charge you 100 naira mm. that you normally charge? It's just a balance. I like the way you started lawlessness. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, well, I think one. I don't blame the people. A lot of times we ignore the the fact that people are humans and they have emotions. Mm -hmm. You know, imagine a parent that has money in the bank and the children are at home crying for food. I mean, some emotions are obviously going to arise in that person. Yeah. So, what are the channels? How is it going to? express that emotion yeah. it's going to look at who it thinks is the, the weakest link. source of mm. yeah. his problem yeah. he doesn't care about the central bank he doesn't exactly. care about directives all he can see is this atm is not giving me money so let me express my anger mm. i expect that the government would have more understanding and sympathy for the people and make plans to accommodate that i don't mm. blame them in any way mm. yeah. uh, well uh, and while you are right, you don't blame the people because they were pushed to the wall. While you might not blame them, but there's a reality that we must face. And the reality is that um, the same thing that happened to us in Nigeria, and we are reacting this way, if it were to happen in some other countries, they will the react this way. Different. Exactly. How do you know? They no, will not. No, 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 no. So, so you, you have a country that happens in another country, yeah. the reaction might be different. Yeah. Now, listen, you have to look at it from the um, the poor view of what kind of system? And no, hold on. Now I'm, I'm coming to that. Now, because and the reason I said that, let me just give a very pedestrian example. You have a father, and I like the example you gave. A father that has money is not taking care of the kids. We see that a lot in our society. Yeah. But you see, there are different families. There are some parents that don't take care of the kids. The kids break down. They send them to good schools or whatever, but they become touts and vandals and bandits everywhere. Some just break out of the house and go and hustle and make, become shoemakers and do whatever till they make it. It's the same scenario, but different reactions. So it's about the individual and the way you react. So that just tells us how the society is, how we react. It's not to blame us. Values. Not to blame us, but to tell us this is who we, we are. are. That this is how we think. Because I can bet in some societies, some guys will have risen up in the society and say, you know what? And I'm, talk I'm not talking pedestrian, okay? I'm not talking the average person like us here. I'm talking the high and mighty mm -hmm. will have risen up to take on the government, will have done something. But our society, our reaction, our and understanding, different. our expressions are different. So now, now, this is just who we are. Now it's even more complicated because mm -hmm. I I'm even surprised that. Um, people feel that this whole policy implementation at this point is about a particular uh, uh, you know. Now, because of that impression, even the opposition doesn't even in quotes, they don't care about how it impacts uh, uh, all right. That's it. Thank you very much for Let's get this done and all of that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, gentlemen, for your views. The truth is um, we Nigerians will have the opportunity to work on ourselves, become better, and also 
we appeal to the government. Policies should not kill us. Definitely. Should not stress <laughs> us. Should make life better. And let's keep fighting for a greater nation as we prepare for our 2023 elections. Michael Oguchi is next after the break.